Hey Flosstube, this is Brian. Welcome back. This is my 70 second Flosstube video and I plan on sharing with you what I have been working on this week. It's been a great week and I'm excited to share with you what I have been stitching. But first of all, I wanna welcome you. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I hope that you enjoy the things that I have to share with you. And if you are returning, thank you for coming back and watching my videos. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and thank you for all of your comments. Like I say, it's been a really great week. Um, I've, been able to I've been able to accomplish quite a bit and I'm really, really happy with what I've been able to do. But first of all, I wanna to respond to some questions that I've had during the week. And I've had a lot of questions, so let's just get started. Uh, first of all, Emily asked me to share some of, talk more about some of our Christmas traditions. Uh, I talked last week about uh, how my wife collects picture books. Uh, one of those picture books that I showed was Christmas Day in the Morning, which is about, uh, which is about a boy um, who lives on a, on a dairy farm and gives his, and decides to give his father uh, a, a really neat Christmas present. Now, uh, that book reminds me a lot of my childhood, partly because um, my dad grew up on a dairy farm and his, his family, they could not go to the tree and open their presents until after the cows had all been milked and they'd even eaten breakfast. And I, my dad didn't really like that. And so he kind of let up on us. I mean, we grew up, I grew up on a ranch and we had to milk a cow. We milked, uh, I milked a cow all during my teenage years. Uh, that was where we had, how we got milk for our family. But dad wasn't so strict that we had to take care of the cow and, and eat breakfast. But we did have to wait until everybody was awake before we could go down and, and open our presents. And we always took a picture of everybody. Um, I have a pretty big family. I have six brothers and a sister. And we would take a picture of us all lined up uh, with the shortest in the front, uh, all, the way back to the, all the way back to the tallest. And that, that tradition of, of lining up like that to go down to, to the tree has carried on in all of our families. Uh, that's what we do in my family now. And we have even started on Christmas morning sharing uh, the pictures that we've taken of our lineups with, with, our, with, uh, with my brothers and sister. So uh, another tradition that we have is uh, my wife and I always go to uh, a Christmas concert of some sort. Uh, we have gone to the, the Messiah concert, which is uh, done by the the Phoenix Symphony, that is, that is really good. They do a wonderful job and the Messiah is one of my favorite things. Um, we actually went to a concert last this week uh, put on by the Millennial Choir and Orchestra. That's an organization that's down here in Arizona. They also have uh, choirs in Utah and California and Texas and they put on a wonderful concert and we actually were able to go and had a had a really really wonderful time uh, speaking of the messiah my mother always played the messiah on christmas eve and that's where i really kind of uh, came to know and love the messiah i always try to listen to the messiah uh, by ha handel uh, during during christmas at one time or another and uh, Emily's question was kind of in the context of my religious beliefs. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And there is a, a Christmas devotional that they put on, that the, the leaders of our church put on at the beginning of December. It is actually this Sunday, and we always make a point of watching it. It is always nice, there's some nice Christmas messages that they give. And, the, and there's also some, some beautiful music, uh, that it, uh, beautiful songs. I will, I think, if I can find the link, I will post the link down, to, on it, down below um, if you're interested in, in watching it. I will believe that it will also be available after Sunday. So if you're not available, able to watch it live, you could watch it some other time. 
it's a great way to get into the the mood of the Christmas season I think um, so so there's that uh, also Christmas Eve uh, we don't go to church on Christmas or Christmas Eve unless of course Sunday falls on Christmas or Christmas Eve um, the Sunday before Christmas generally um, in our congregation we have a big Christmas program where uh, the the choir sings uh, several numbers and and it's a kind of a special day also um, as a family though we celebrate uh, on Christmas Eve we always make a point of uh, reading the Christmas story out of Luke and sometimes Matthew and and kind of trying to remember the real reason for the for Christmas there is a, I'll, if I can find a link to it there's also kind of a little program that we follow that we really like uh, on Christmas Eve. Um, it, it, it involves reading the scriptures, uh, reading Luke and Matthew to remember Christmas and uh, interspersing that with singing Christmas carols. And, and that, that is really nice and it's a really nice way that we think to, to remember the Christmas story and the real, the real reason why we celebrate Christmas. So those are, those are a few of our traditions. Um, I don't know that they're much different than anybody else's, but uh, we, we really enjoy them. And, and this uh, time of year is, is one of my favorites. Uh, Nanny asked me, how many hours of stitching do you consider a day? So I basically posted charts showing how many days I'd spend on each project. And I, it's not a set number of hours, it's just if I worked on a project sometime that day, then that counts as a day. So uh, generally, uh, so, so day is kind of, I guess, a, a little bit subjective in that case. Um, the Obsessed Stitcher, hi Becky. Uh, she asked me about, Queen, uh, about 101 alphabets. She asked me what I am, uh, what if I'm using my frame to stitch 101 alphabets and yes Becky I am I have I have scroll bars that are just over three feet wide and 101 alphabets just barely fits on that in fact I had to I had to cut um, I had to cut like about an inch off of my fabric to make it so that it fit on my frame um, so it just barely fits and and it'll it'll work so but you have to have really wide scroll bars um, yeah let's see here and Ann asked me how can you cross stitch when you don't look at the pattern and I am not sure I'm not sure how I ever gave the impression that I cross stitch without looking at the pattern. Um, I, I, I use my pattern. It sits underneath on the table underneath, uh, underneath my stand so that I can, I can glance down at it whenever I want to. Um, I do make working copies of my pattern so that I can, I can mark them up and be able to tell where I am when I'm stitching. Okay, Angeles me preguntó, Quisiera preguntarle cuánto tiempo dedica más o menos a coser en un día. Gracias por el video y feliz semana. I need to practice my Spanish uh, because I mentioned before my daughter is going to Argentina uh, and I would love to go back to Argentina, which means, and my Spanish is really rusty. Uh, so Angeles uh, translated into English, she asked, asked me, how many how many hours a day I spend uh, stitching and I spend uh, about uh, it kind of depends on the day and uh, on the evening and how busy I am uh, usually a couple of hours uh, is is a good a good number uh, two or three hours dos o tres horas más o menos bueno um, once upon a stitch Hi, Lori. Asked me, do you ever have any confusion in picking up a whip that you haven't stitched on for a while to figure out where you are and how to move forward? No, I do not. And that's because I mark my chart 
And I, so I, as, I, as I stitch, I mark my chart, uh, I mark off the stitches that I've made. And so on my chart, I can easily pick up where I am just because I can see where I am on the diagonal and it's right there on my chart. My threads are already, uh, already parked, so generally they're just there waiting to be stitched. Uh, they're parked where they need to be for, the, for that stitching, so I don't even really need to uh, look and see what color I need to stitch with because in general everything's already there and I can just say, okay, this thread is this symbol and I can just stitch this symbol. So it's really, it's really easy for me to pick up where I left off. Um, sometimes I have to get into the rhythm of a certain design just because every design's a little bit different, right? It's it, whether it's full coverage or whether it's um, not, and every even every full coverage design has its own characteristics. So sometimes it takes me a little bit to get back into the rhythm of that design, but I can actually I can pick up right where I left off even if I haven't stitched for on that piece for a while. Jennifer asked me what I do for a living, and she said it's probably something precise and having to do with numbers. Um, so I am, a, I am an engineer. Uh, I work for a local semiconductor company. It's a company that you have probably never heard of, but it is uh, well known in the industry. I do digital design, so you are right. I have to be very precise. Um, and. Yeah, it kind of has to do with numbers, but it more has more to do with logic and programming. And yeah, it, I guess that the the way that I have to think for my work kind of bleeds over into my stitching a little bit. Um, so Brenda asked me, how did I, for a Savior's Praise that I showed last week, she asked me how I chart the different wording and basically what I've done is um, I pull the letters out and generally I can, there's a let, generally that letter is somewhere else in the chart if it's not in, in the word that I'm stitching. So I can kind of look around the chart to get a feel for how, the, how to make the letters. Um, I've had to kind of guess on a couple of letters to try to make them look as close as possible. And I have, um, Sometimes I get out graph paper and graph things out uh, just to kind of get a feel for how I want to do it. Or I've just kind of, the last, the last change that I made, I just kind of freehanded it and, and kind of guessed and it just worked out just right. So I just kind of look at where those letters are on the chart to kind of get a feel for that and then, and then make my changes. Gigi asked me, um, well, Gigi says that she wants to start a big design and she asked me where, what would be a good design to start with? And I'm not gonna give you a specific design, Gigi, but what I will say is find something that you really love and really want to stitch. Um, if it's something that you love and that you want to stitch, then you're more likely to stick through the end to the end with it because uh, with a big design you are going to get to a point where you're kind of tired of it and you just kind of have to push through because you you love the design and you love the you love the result and you're excited to see how it's going to turn out so that would be my first guess um, you might want to if if you're looking for something uh, kind of on the simple side that has less confetti as I mentioned, uh, lavender and lace patterns, they're big, but they're not really confetti heavy. They are in some places, but not in others. So, I mean, those that would be a good simple design as opposed to something that has a lot of confetti. But in general, I would say, find something that you really love and that you want to, and that you want to stitch, and that will, that will help you. There's nothing different between a big, design and a little design. The only difference is the number of stitches that are in it. So um, just find something that you love and that, that will, that will help, help get you through uh, the times when you've been working on it for uh, a couple of months and, you want, and you, you're kind of tired of it. T 
Adams asked me, what are the apps you used or created to keep track of your stitching? So the only thing that I use to keep track of my stitching is a spreadsheet. Um, yeah, that is the spreadsheet that I've created and I've shared that spreadsheet. I, at one time, I think I mentioned that I used uh, iOS shortcuts to kind of build something that I could do on my, on my phone. I've kind of, that has kind of fallen out of use with me. I don't know why. I've stopped using it and it's kind of out of, it's, it's kind of fallen into disrepair. So, and I don't know how I would share shortcuts. It's not like creating an app that you can download. Uh, so those are, those are all my questions. Thank you so much for your questions. And um, I hope that, and if you have any other questions, feel free to uh, put them in the comments below. I always enjoy, I always enjoy answering any questions that you have. So let's talk about what I have been working on this week. I have been working on um, this. This is Queen Anne's Lace by Marilyn, Le sorry, Queen Anne's Lace by Marilyn, Marilyn Levitt Emblem of Lavender and Lace. It's a picture of a lady in a in an elegant dress and it's been it's it's been really fun to work on uh, one of the things about this pattern is there's blending filament all the way through it there's two different colors of sorry not blending filament there's braid all the way through it krennic braid and it's there's two different colors there's an antique gold color in the yellow and then there's a vatican gold which looks almost silver in the in the blue and I finished my first I, I finished off my first uh, spindle of, of braid and and this is this is the Vatican gold and actually I have just a little bit left of the of the antique gold on another on another on another one of these so that tells you how much how much braid there is in this um, so and I'm not even I'm like about a half, about a third of the way maybe yeah no a quarter of the way through this so it uses a lot of braid <laughs> um, I'll show you a picture of what it looked like the last time you saw it uh, this I am stitching on 32 count dirty Belfast linen which I believe is the called for fabric. And I'm using the called for floss, which is DMC, and of course the, the metallic braid. And like I say, it's been really fun. I, I'm happy with what I have been able to accomplish. And this is what it looks like now. So I basically stitched two, di two diagonals. These diagonals are getting, getting longer and they're taking a long time now. So, um, so yeah, I'm seeing more of this blue over here, which I'm excited about. I am excited to see the edge. The edge of the design is about over here. So I've got a few more diagonals to go before I, be it before I hit this corner. Um, yeah, I'm getting close to her arm. Her arm's just right up here, so. Um, it should start to look uh, more interesting in the next little while. Uh, it might actually start something that looks like a, uh, like a person instead of just uh, the bottom of a dress. So I finished this. Uh, this flower is all done and this bow is basically done. This is like a stone or something in the background. This light color. And then more of this, this yellow is getting wider and it's taking me longer to get through. So I'll give you a bit, little bit closer look. You know, that is kind of embarrassing. 
I was looking at it thinking it looked really strange because of all of the all of the diagonal lines that were running through it and I was showing the back of my project so you got a good view of my back here's what it really looks like this looks a lot better oh, okay yeah that looks a lot better to me <laughs> so like I say I finished this the bow up here and stitched a, a couple of uh, a couple of diagonals and I'm getting closer to the to the edge of the chart which is over here yeah that looks a lot better and um, yeah no the 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 yellow is getting wider it's kind of neat it's kind of neat you're seeing these uh, the way the, the, the fabric of the dress is draping is really starting to show up. And it's really starting to look good. So I'll give you a closer look of, my fr of the front instead of the back. That was really embarrassing. Um, yeah, no... You can see there's the 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 fabric kind of folds here, so you've got the edge that comes up here and here. That'll be I'll be excited to see more of that. And there's going to be beads in here as well. There's beads around the there's a few beads around the flowers. There are beads that run all the way along the bottom of the yellow part of this dress. There are beads on the border of the yellow, so. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy with uh, what I've been able to accomplish. And this is going to go away for a little bit, but I'm, I, I'm looking forward to, to pulling it out again and working on it. I'd, I'd love to get to a point where it's a little bit more interesting than just just the bottom of a dress. Okay, so what am I going to work on this week? This is another piece that I haven't worked on for a very long time and I am, it's time, it's time to work on this and I'm really excited to do that. I'm going to be stitching 101 alphabets. So I think I've stitched three alphabets. Um, we'll see how many I can do this week. Of course, this is a design by Rosewood Manor. It's a big sampler of a bunch of alphabets with motifs spread all the way through it. This is a huge, huge piece. This is probably the largest piece. This is the largest piece I've ever stitched. So it's probably going to be around for a while. And I'll show you what it looks like. I am stitching on 36 count ivory even weave which is uh, by, I got, it's uh, fabric by Fabric Flair. I think I mentioned before, um, it looks like the color is printed on the fabric because the back is white and the, and the front is, I guess you'd say it's ivory. This is what it looks like right now. So I started down in this, this corner and I've been working this way and yeah one two three alphabets we'll see how many more i can do i didn't mention this last time i showed this piece but i have already made a mis an alignment mistake um all of this is over one stitch that way i'm not i'm not taking it out because it doesn't really bug me but I have to be careful when I'm stitching over here that I don't uh, propagate that mistake all the way through the chart. So I'm planning on working this way and coming back, well, coming back around this way to a line through here. So I have to be careful not to go off of this area when I, when I choose what I'm gonna do. This alphabet, I'm gonna keep it aligned the same all the way across. And then when I get over to this end, I'll make sure that I, that I compensate. 
But, yeah, this is, this is, this is really exciting. I'm really excited to, to show more of the alphabets and more motifs. Okay, so we'll see, uh, see where we get to this week and see how things go. So that is all that I have to share with you. If you have, if you want to follow my daily progress, you can follow me on Instagram. My name is at Blitstitch on Instagram. And as always, I hope that you have a great week. Uh, that you have an enjoyable time as we get closer to to Christmas at the end of the at the end of the month. I hope that you have a great week and that you uh, that everything goes well. Uh, feel free to comment. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below and I will answer them. Answer any questions that you have. And I'll, as always, feel free to to like this video if you've enjoyed watching me. Thank you so much for spending time with me, and we will talk to you later. Goodbye.